Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So, the first thing is I'm, I haven't been able to get some videos out in, in quite some time longer than I'd like. So, a couple of things have been going on. I've got uh, a lot of work going on. Um, I'm bidding out projects right now that's going to go out the next 18 to 24 months. And then life is in the way a little bit. So, there's just been... It's, the last little while has been pretty busy. So, hopefully we can get back on schedule, start getting some... Uh, more regular videos posted. I've got a number of things in line to get put together. So yeah, but so today what I want to do is um, I was able to finally get the shop cleared of some projects that I've been had going on and be able to get to a point where I could actually at least straighten out the shop a little bit um, and get it in a state that actually is somewhat presentable. So um, so today we're going to do a shop tour. So um, a little background. Uh, I bought this uh, property, uh, we're in an urban area, and it's the property, the, the building is 20 by 28. It started out as a 20 by 20 unfinished garage, <coughs> excuse me, and then uh, six years ago, and when we bought it, and so at that point, I put an eight foot addition on, so we've got 20 by 28. And then I'll link to a video here someplace and uh, of kind of some early photos and some stuff as I was being built out. So we brought in electrical. Uh, I brought a sub -panel, 50 amp sub panel in here. This is a detached garage. And then I brought in gas so I could put heat in here. I keep this heated um, all winter long and uh, went through insulating, putting it together. So, and then kind of the evolution over the last um, six years. So, um, so yeah, let's get started with it. So I think the first thing we'll do is we'll start here on the front of the shop. See if I can pan out here for you. There you go. So we've got, this is the front, uh, the driveway. So this is a detached garage. We've got a 16 foot garage door. And then if I move over here, coming up this wall, first thing we've got is the, the Yeti smart bench. I used to have Behind here where this pile of wood is, is where the kiln used to be. And I'll, I'll put a photo up here so you can see the old kiln uh, that I built out. And I did a video on that kiln. It worked out really well. It's just I am not haven't been using it. And then there's lumber storage behind that. Um, I have rack shelving along two walls of the shop. So the first rack set of racks is basically uh, lumber storage. I do keep the shop heated all winter long at a minimum of at least 40 degrees. Uh, so, but yeah, loving this, loving this, this new smart, smart bench. Um, and I'm actually just in the process of now uh, figured out how to get the dust collector hooked up to this. So um, I haven't even tried it yet. I've been playing with that over the last couple of days trying to figure out how to do that. So as we walk through here, Kind of this, this second bank of rack shelving. I've got tools in there, some storage, chainsaw, stuff like that. And then I've got back back in here is actually, I've got the slabbing mill. And then these are some sawhorses that I did a video on. Um, the timber frame style sawhorses, which convinced me not to do a timber frame style, more, you know, all the Morrison tendons for a pergola. Um, it was just, it, it was, I'm glad I did it, but it was a lot of work and uh, I was not going to do that on a large structure, um, at least the way I'm set up right now and, and do it all by hand. So, uh, there is a video on that. I'll put a description, uh, link up on that. And then, um, do have, you know, fire extinguishers all throughout the shop. Um, and then we kind of move back in here. So we've got a couple of tools. Uh, we've got the, it's a 15 inch Delta. Uh, planer that came with straight heads on there, but then I changed that to a helical head. Pick this up on Craigslist. Um, this is on a uh, mobile base. Uh, this is actually medicine cabinet that I'm working on out of some of the elm. Uh, and some, you know, if you've seen some of my other videos, it's some of that elm that I've done. Um, and then, uh, so out here next, I've got the, the Rikon 14 inch bandsaw that doesn't get utilized a lot. 
And I've got a, down here, I've got a, a floor suite. Actually, I put that in, it came with the dust collector. I just don't use it um, as much as I thought I would. So, so there's that section, and we're gonna move back in here so this section here is mainly, we've got some tiling tools up there, um, painting, tiling stuff, and just some various things in it. And this is mainly glues and oils and just various chemicals. And then along here is, is more like spray can paint, uh, paint thinners and that kind of stuff. And then this bank of drawers in here is actually screws and nails and just various hardware and then some caulking and more hardware there's some clamps in here that don't fit on the, the rack that's over here and then we've got the craig foreman down below there um, that's not normally where it sits but it's usually there's a pressure washer sitting there and it's just not there right now so and then we'll kind of come over here uh, take a look on the back of the way and then Next thing we've got in the corner is the, the Clearview Cyclone, uh, and we'll just and then there's I've got my uh, air filtration system with wind. It's actually actually it works out pretty good. I just got to remember to turn it on, and then, uh, then we've got the filters, the stacked filters, and I had to build a little base because I one of the things with this shop is you're supposed to have eight foot ceilings. And I have, I think, seven foot 10 in here. So they're really light, they're really short. So it was a little bit of a challenge trying to get that thing shoehorned in there. Um, but then the dust collection comes up, main trunk, and there it goes into a, a 90, got lots of light there, sorry. And then drops over into some of the other tools and it keeps dropping, coming all the way across and down, kind of down the center. The one thing, uh, most of the, with the dust collection, I do have most of them, uh, if we can get out of the light here a little bit, I've got the automatic blast gates, which I love. On most of the tools, I've got the blast gates set up. The few that I don't um, is like the table saw, which is over there, we'll, we'll look at that a little bit. And, but like all the other stuff have automatic blast gates, which it makes this really nice so that I, once I turn on a tool, um, the tools that I don't use often have the blast gates and then, <clears throat> excuse me, the table saw actually has a sensor on it and actually all of the ones that have blast gate has sensors. So it turns on the dust collector and then it runs it for another 30 seconds to a minute afterwards before it shuts down, which makes it really nice. So really loving this. Um, I've gone through a couple of different renditions of uh, dust collectors. I was able to actually pick this one up really cheaply on uh, Craigslist with all the spiral ducting and fittings and everything. Um, I paid for everything less uh, than what the whole system, about 75% of what this would have cost. And I got all the duct work to, that went with it, which was sometimes as much as the machine. So you can see a little red light there. Uh, that means uh, somebody hasn't cleaned their, their dust collector. So it's got a little sensor right there. And I forget what it's called, but I did this a number of years ago because I've gone through and sometimes, especially if I'm doing a lot of stuff with a planer, and I'll run through bags, you know, big long bags of stuff through the planer and just forget and not paying attention. I've stuffed this thing like up in here and not realizing it. So that actually is a little DIY thing that I did. I found online, somebody did that. So that was kind of cool. Works out nice and it keeps me from overstuffing it. So then we move on to, this is the back wall of the garage. So we're opposite of the garage door. So this is actually uh, a rolling wall. And if you can look right up there has uh, their barn door, like um, for pole barns and stuff, it's that hardware. And then they hang on the, the bracket. So they're nice and heavy duty. It's bolted to the racking up above there. And then, so this will, let's see if we can do this 
these all slide. So I've got it set up so it's a, got a little bit wider. Wow, here we go. Ooh. Um, this one's a little bit wider and has uh, most of the clamps and that, that section's a little bit wider. But the rest of the sections are divided up into even bays for sustainers. And most of them have drawers. So I can get to two of these at one time. And then, so I've got the various sustainers with the drawers in there. And then above, up in here, I've just got these little cubby, a little uh, bins, and they have various things from hardware, whatever like that. And then up above is just some more storage, and then even some storage on top of that. Uh, down underneath is kind of some wood storage and stuff that needs to be sorted through and kind of cleaned out. So um, I do have a video on that I did this clamp rack on. If anybody's interested in that, I'll put a link up for that. Um, and then we move over to, um, this is what I'm currently using for most of my work. Um, the MFT and it uh, works out pretty well. So this is actually um, a little jewelry box that needs to get finished up yet, but uh, I did two of those, uh, one for my fiance and one for her daughter. And then, um, so I do have all the wood to do a ruble, ruble split top uh, bench. So I've got all the hardware, I've got all the wood, and it's just, you know, time. So anyway, so what I've got is under the, underneath I've got the vacuum that comes up with the boom arm. And so I hook up everything to that. I also have um, this set of bank of drawers is uh, all sandpaper. So typically like up here, I've got some of my batteries. I've got some of the tools I might use all the time. And uh, I've still got to get that cleaned up, get some of those chargers mounted. Um, I also do have, I don't know if you can see that, um, I've got the VAC, the Festool uh, clamping system. This sits over on the side. I got that recently to do some stuff. Um, that works out really nice when I was doing edge band, a lot of edge banding. Um, these are now discontinued. I think they're going to still be sporting with parts, but you can't get these anymore. Um, this is, that, that's been really great for a lot of stuff, so. Uh, and then we'll just move around here a little bit further. So, a couple other things is, up there you can see is the mini split. Uh, so this, I do have heat. There's the heater. Um, this is set up so... The heater is actually does not use inside combustion air. It's got a double flue up there that brings outside air for combustion. So if I if I was spraying some type of a chemical that is potentially combustible, we don't have to worry about blowing up the shop. Um, so that was one of the things I, I did. Um, I don't do a lot of spraying of stuff. You know, maybe a little bit of lacquer randomly, but not very much. So it's really sh shouldn't be an issue, but. Uh, and then this is a Pioneer mini split that I installed a couple years back. Uh, probably undersized this a little bit. It's really hard when it's really hot and I'm in here and the machines are going. It doesn't quite keep up, but it definitely takes the edge off. It makes things a lot, a lot nicer. So, so next to that, I've got the, the drum sander. Let me back up here a little bit. So... If it makes sense. So the drum sander will come out alongside of here and I can slide that out. So I can get eight foot pieces if I slide the drum sander and I still can walk through here. It's really tight. Same with the joiner we'll talk about that in a minute. The joiner can go all the way back. So trying to you know keep things going and then uh, with the table saw it can come all the way across. I do have to shift these periodically in the shop in order to do that, but you know, you do what you gotta do. Um, and then up here, uh, we just, this is basically all my finishes and 
just some other storage. And then uh, back in there, I've got actually that was a lot of my sheet goods, smaller sheet goods, which that needs to go away. And I need to actually do some cleaning and get rid of some of that stuff. Um, and we got some, just some hoses and stuff back in here. And then back in there is the William and Hussey uh, molder. And that, that's on wheels along with, uh, the only thing in here that is not on wheels is the drill press. Otherwise, everything is on wheels in the entire shop. So we've got the drill press, which I got this a few years back. I really like this drill press a lot. Uh, and then that, that is actually all my um, storage. I've got like bolts. So like the top one is the, this top drawer is all my drill bits. And then it progressively gets to bigger fasteners all the way as I go down there. Uh, and there's the electrical panel. And then I've got a hose reel up there that goes down to when you air compressor that kind of tucks up underneath there and then this is long enough that I can get anywhere in the shop with that um, then we got the kind of oscillating drum belt sander um, tool shed, shed uh, box that doesn't really get used anymore that one is I bought that in just out of high school so I've had that thing a long time um, and then we've got this York craft six inch joiner it's got the longer bed on it which is really nice. This came with a straight knife. Uh, changed that over to a helical. And it was probably more, I think I paid 200 bucks for this uh, with a straight blade and probably I think, I forget how much I paid for the, the head, but it is phenomenal, the helical head compared to the straight. So, and then on top of that, we've got a little sharpening station and a grinder and old computer, and then I've got some uh, stuff with the do doors open. Um, yep, we're just gonna leave that open. So, uh, just got a couple of uh, just bolt-on shelves and uh, just more junk packed in here. We'll come around in here. Uh, one of the things, and I did do, and I love and hate, is I did all of this tin on the sides I was able it's a lighter gauge like uh, pole barn tin but it's a lighter gauge I think it's called uh, barn liner or something like that. I don't remember exactly what it is but I was able to order that and it was cheaper to order that than a uh, sheetrock and then I did the same thing on the ceilings and then I didn't have to mud and tape it is a, the ceiling and I mean there's times that that having those ribs is a little bit challenging trying to hang some stuff on the walls and stuff like that. Um, it just makes it a little bit more of a challenge, but you know, you can't see any anyway walls, so, which is, which is fine, so. And then uh, we come over this way. Um, there is a window in the, there, but it is not, it's all covered up. And then I've got a couple of toolboxes and then my computer, um, some more storage hanging up there. And then all the way back to the front door. So really love the shop. Oh, the one thing we didn't talk about was kind of in the elephant in the middle of the room is the, um, the Grizzly three horse saw that I have. And it has a aftermarket uh, extension with an Incra lift in there. This cabinet pulls away and then the other thing I did is I've got this uh, sliding uh, table on it, which I really love a lot. And then um, there's a whole video, actually, I just put up recently. And I'll put that if you're, if you're more interested in some of the stuff of the dust collection. And then what this does, I've got one trunk coming down through the center. I've got a couple of blast gates. The bottom one is for the table saw, that one is for a downdraft on the router table. So that comes in, um, and then everything's wired in on one cord. And like I said, I, I'm, there is another video that, if you wanna look at that, 
And then on the outfeed table, this was some rollers I picked up off the, uh, the side of the road one day. It was a long thing, so I built this. And then underneath it, I've got uh, double stacked sustainers. So there's sustainer here and back there. So there's they're too deep in there. And then in here, I've got a power feeder um, for that that bolts onto the table saw. If I'm doing a lot of stuff where I'm running stuff all the time, so I've got that. So, well, that'll wrap up the tour of the shop for right now. I um, hope you enjoyed that. Um, any questions, uh, please let me know. And uh, yeah, we got a bunch of stuff coming down the road, more stuff on the Yeti Smart Bench and uh, some other projects. Um, and yeah, so until next time, have a good one. Thanks.